I mean, autumn on the River Wye, or indeed any decent barbel river, it's got to be worth coming down, hasn't it? I've come back down here because I had some good fishing before, but I'm like a month later. I was worried about the leaves going in the water because as it gets later, they're going to blow in the water. A, they catch on the line going along, and B, come end of October, November, maybe early November, while it's fishable, all the leaves and rubbish is all over the bottom. I always find that makes it not so much stale, it's stale in, a, in still water, it definitely puts the fish off a bit, but also they can't see a bait, can they? The mist is coming off the water. I've driven through fog nearly three hours again. So I've got here, I'm hoping it's going to burn off. I'm after, obviously, barbel. Going to get chub, I guess. Um, I'd set up for a couple of three barbel in a day. I'm late to the party. It's about quarter to 11, I think, time I've turned up. So the last film I made here, wait for this, was down there. <laughs> it's about 20 feet that way. It's not even flooded. It's just come up a bit with a bit of rain. Nice and clear. Um, Tomorrow I might go piking because this is, as I'm doing this, the pike season just opened down here. So I'm basically come for the pike fishing, but I've got to have a go for the bubble. I've got to. It's sort of my favourite species in freshwater, really. I'm set up down here, I'll show you. Set up with my barrow in the water, and I've got a puncture in it. I've got, I'm hoping I'm getting it home because it's running on the piece of tube at the moment, split, so that's got to be repaired. This is how I've rigged out. You've probably seen it in one of our other barbell films, got the buzzers there. I've got plenty of ground bait. Now there's a lot of pace out there. All, oh, I've got a few pellets in there. All I've got, no maggots, no corn, no nothing. Boilies, nothing. Just ground bait and pellets. Usual feeder rods, Jesse Avon rods. The old up here. Oh, my jumbo, huge jumbo feeders. Gonna need them. Uh, I've got waders in case I wanna go and have a throw around. But man. What a superb setting. The leaves are just turning on the trees and they are on the trees rather than in the water. So, a lot more pace out there. I'm hoping my feeders will hold. First thing to do, get some balls of ground bait, stones in the middle, bosh them out there and uh, try and stimulate a little bit of feed going in that would be the equivalent of me starting fishing at seven in the morning and putting a load of feeder balls in there, you know, with a feeder. I'm just trying to shortcut my way to a fish. I've let it soak for a bit. It's quite. I want a little bit more water in that. Better. When you squeeze it, you want it to, to ball. Now before, I was putting stones in them. I can't even see any stones now. The water's come up so far. I've got no strength in my fingers and my wrist. I've been clutching the steering wheel so tight in the fog and the motorway. Well, I'm not going to put stones in these, but because I've lost distance with the water coming up the river, I'm going to have to use a catapult to get them out there. So it's sort of a bit of a risk that they break up on impact because they've got to go so far, but I've got no choice. We've got to give it a start somewhere. Let's see what happens. Sounding like they're breaking up. That's a better one. That breaks up. Sometimes you can get away with making a slightly smaller ground bait ball. That was a better one. They just gotta be really tight. Job done. Uh, we're going to be using pellet and feeder first, but my hunches, waders and lunch of meat, because that's a style of fishing I enjoy. But pellet and feeder helps get that swim going. Got real, as you can see, like big feeders. Handfuls go in it. All gets washed out. So there's a pair of feeders. Let's get them out there. See if we can lose them, snag them up, hook a fish. Even get to hold out there.
Well, I'm only on Avon quivers, as you can see, that's all I fish with. And they're, uh, <laughs> they're whack right round, their quiver tips are bent right over. So there's a lot more pace out, and you think, even though, say, it's come up, I don't know, a foot from what it was when I fished before, that's a bigger volume of water pushing on the line, possibly bumping the feeder out of position. And the more empty the feeder gets washed out, the lighter it will be, and it will probably bump in. Could bump into a snag, or could bump into a fish. I think this right hand one needs to go further out and more square there because those ground bait balls I threw in are going to roll that way. So I might have actually got a better chance further down the swim, but we're going to fish the top end first and try and pull them up. When I say them, I mean him. One. I've got a bag down here. You can see I've got the bag just, just resting, sort of, so the, I can pick the rod up, but it's just resting barely, barely on the butt, so if I do get a take and slams over, doesn't tip up. I normally have a little stake that goes in there over the top, um, but the, it's hard to get in with this gravel at the top of the bank. So we are indeed fishing. Quite a nice light uh, today for filming. I mean, I like blue sky, we all like to see it, but the actual uniformity of light like this is sometimes quite good for the camera. So I'm gonna put the head cam on as well. Um, because I can whiz my hat off, put that on, and at least if I do get a fish, I might get it on this camera or this camera, fingers crossed. Sometimes I even get a take on camera. Get lucky sometimes. The thing is up here, you want your drag set, you can't put it on back wind like I do still water because it'll just keep unwinding, won't it, with the current. So I have the feeling, do you know, maybe even float fishing will Woody gave me a big, a big float um, years ago. Uh, God, it takes about four swan shots for down below the, the railway bridge in the swim there for chub. There's a film up on it if you want to look at it, chub. I think I had 10, 12 chub. Nice, I mean, not baby chublets. I mean, I'm talking three, four pounders. Really good fishing down there. Never duplicated it since. So this is, so people know, it's not some secret squirrel place, friends of the chairman and all that stuff, climbing the greasy pole, I call it. It is a day ticket water from Hereford and District Angling Association. I believe you can join a membership should you live close. I live three hours away, so obviously it's a long drive. You have to be within a drivable distance to use the ticket. But it's a day ticket, it's a day ticket. You go into Woody's Tackle Shop, and I'll tell you one reason. I'm new to the water, I've only been doing it five, six years. <laughs> but you've got to listen to Woody because he tells you where to go. It's I can't believe I've done this, lumbered all my gear and actually burst a tire on the last trip on the barrow, going through all the bumps and everything on that side. And he's told me to come right round the outside there and it's an easy footpath. It's much easier if you're pushing your barrow to come round there. I mean, I have to have a barrow, you know, for, for age anyway, um, just to get round for access. But it's a much easier access round there. So there you go, that's worth going into Woody's shop just to get that information. It is for me anyway. I mean, he's also given me a, another mark, which if I do no good here by lunchtime, I'll probably go upstream because he's given me a mark up there by some flats or something. He's drawn me a, a special woody type mat that only woody understands. I always get lost with it. But um, I might give that a go this afternoon if I struggle and don't catch anything here. I believe this is all going to burn off. So I'm all set up. Take a little while for me to get a feel for the feeder, where it's bumping or where it's catching, where it's snagging up, that type of thing. It's all changed since the last time I came. I think it's almost nearly food time. The sun's just starting to fight its way through this fog. It seems pretty quiet and still. I mean, sometimes you get, obviously the housing estates all on the other side of the trees, you get quite a lot of racket building and stuff like that. But considering it's so close to Hereford town, oh, I didn't even see that because I was looking away. That's why I have those buzzers. That was either a lion bite or a bang from something like a chub. Either way, I feel that was an indication. Yeah, sometimes it's a, uh, it's a, no, 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 probably a chub. Something is amazing, a lot of town places, you just go a little way outside and they've got really nice stretches. There's a stretch down in Somerset, I fish for chub on a small river there. 
And, you know, you could be anywhere in the countryside and you're right, right, sort of in the city. It's amazing. It's going to burn out. Let's switch the fish on or turn them off. What a setting. I just love coming. Look, I like sort of late summer, late summer. I don't do really early doors fishing for uh, barb in like June time. Sometimes the river's very low and weedy. But this time of year is when they feed up and the chub as well. So it's a good time to come before the leaves go in the trees. No, before the leaves go in the water ground. Well, I'm confident now I've had that one bang. It's all it takes, one boom, and it could fall down. I'm sure it won't fish like it did last time I came here, but if I could just get a barbel to start with and then anything else would be an absolute bonus. It's a time of year, this will be my last barbel trip here because I don't come later in the year. Well, I know they catch them through the flood through the winter, of course they do. But you need to check with Woody, you might want heavier feeders, you might want different areas. He will tell you where to go in the winter fishing for them and they do get barbel through the winter and really good chub fishing. Where's that? Who's put the food bag back in their car? Oh no, first thing out, health food, Pringles, deadly these things, once you start, once you start, they're difficult to put back. Well, try and keep everything close by. Like I've got, I'm the worst fisherman ever. I have this splattered everywhere. You can see all over the place. But um, I've got my ground bait there, but I use the lid off the ground bait because when you've got tiny things like this, you know, I've got my pellets, my bands, my hooks, I've got swivels in there and I've got scissors. So, you know, I've got it all pretty close to hand and I can rig up and put extra baits on, you know, and change as, as I want. So keep it all fairly tight to where you are, and obviously the food bag. No more bites yet. There's a lot of pace out there in that river. Pulling those quiver tip rods, as you can see. They are, oh, it's tangled up. Have I missed a ring there now? Oh, no, it's not. That was a little tap then. I'm due a bite really from a chub. I'm sure if I put lunch of meat on, I would get uh, I would get a chub, pretty sure of that, especially a small on a size 10 hook. Normally with lunch of meat, I'm fishing bigger size sixes, barbless. Um, but you know, I'm pretty sure if I put a small piece on there and rolled it around, I'm still thinking float. I'm sort of almost desperate to get this feeder business out of my system for two hours. If I get no bites, then I'm gonna go wading and either run the float through or link ledger with um, some sort of play-doh or plasticine so it bumps through over the top of maybe, probably need a swan shot today. There's no doubt autumn is one of the best times of the season for the river fishermen especially. Water clarity is pretty good though. It's all clear still, it's just volume of water, fresh water coming down. It's not sort of coloured. Oh, here comes the enemy. I'm on a fish, guys, but I don't know what it is. Oh, I've got a feeling it's a barbel. <laughs> that would be sweet. It's a barbel. It can't be a chub fighting this hard. His fins would fall off. I don't feel a big fish, but it's going well. I 
I'm not going to go crazy on the... Try and get the camera down here. Don't want to lose fish. I lost so many fish trying to get you guys action or whatever. Under this one. Get my neck. The extra pace current here is giving them a bit of power as well. Trouble is my age, I get down on my knees like this, can't get back up again. I have to send for the AA in a forklift truck. Don't laugh guys, you younger ones about 40. Wait till you get older. Here he comes. I might put waders on actually, guys, next time. Oh, he did. Oh, he's actually not a small one. There we go, a piece of Hereford gold, I'm going to call it. He's a frisky one, came in quite quick. And there we go, river wide barbel in the autumn, iconic species I call them, that's a beauty. Years ago, the, cla the, the classic pose was this one, and you never smiled, my god you never smiled. <whistles> Jesus. There was a bite on that one people. Weed him in anyway. Oh, tell, a, tell a lie. I'm not even sure there's not a fish on it. Nah, tell you more. I bet that was a chub look. I'll tell you it's a small chub. Oh. Wow. Look like a number 49 bus. You're waiting and then two come along, a barbel and a chub. Brilliant. And, sun's out. Well, the thing is, um, feed fishing's fine. It's a bit sort of like bolt rigging for carp. It's, it, you catch a lot of fish. I'm gonna say it's sort of fairly crude, but it is very, very effective. So anybody's beginners, it's a good way to go. But for me personally, Although I do the bolt rigging films, you know, it's just the way it is. They hook the cells off, they go for carp. I'd sooner catch a carp on a floater off the surface in the margins that I can see, or one that's feeding in close, hook it on a float, something like that, and zzz, off it goes, rather than hook it like 100 yards out. And the same goes with the barbel. Although this is effective, and that's why I'm using it to start with, I'm at, I put the rubbers on, by the way, I'm desperately, desperately waiting almost for it to die so I can go out there and start wading, rolling some meat around, just seeing what really is out there. Because the feed is in one spot, right? The food's going downstream. They might be laying down there in that shade area. So that's what I'm, I'm thinking anyway. Where I'm casting here, that's fine. But a lot of that food's getting washed way down there. So there could be a, several fish laying right down the back, you know, shoulder barbel I don't even know about. But rolling meat, I can wade, move along, move along, move along and cover, get, cover the uh, area more. The sun's out. River looks superb. That early morning, up past 10. <laughs> the early morning mist, take two. The early morning mist rising off the river. It looks idyllic. Early morning, Graham, it's half past 10, quarter to 11. Yeah, I'm not stupid. I filmed it while it was there because I knew it would burn off. Come on, let's have another one. Get greedy. All fishermen get greedy. As soon as you caught one, you think, I'm so pleased I caught one. Mm, now I want another one. And another one. There's an autumnal canoeist going past. The boat, did it, yeah, the, I think the boats annoy the anglers more than they annoy the fish. Several times boats have gone through and within a minute, two minutes, I've, I've had a bite or a chub or whatever. And of course, the fish are used to boats going up and down. Now 
And I know generally with barbel fishing, it's bang, the rod goes straight over. But I find, in my experience, heavy feeders, quite a push of water. There's a belly of line, a bit like sea fishing off a beach in a big tide with grip lead. There's a belly of line, okay? It's pushing on the belly of line, the actual water, the river coming down. Up comes barbel chub, whatever. He grabs a bait, he turns away, that sets a hook usually, so you get a bite pulled down. But it might not pull down and hold down. It might do bump, bang, 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 like this, keep doing this. And that's because they've dislodged the feeder and the feeder is being bounced down by the current. So the fish is going downstream, bouncing the feeder along with the current. So if you do get one of those bites that just goes down like this and then keeps doing that. I heard that. It keeps doing that. Just wind down into it, you know, and, and get tight to it because it could be a fish that's actually bumping the feeder way down the swim. Don't expect it always to pull over and hold over. Heavy water fishing, I find, when you're across the, the uh, current like this, the flow, it will dislodge the feeder and bounce a bit. So I was just looking here, I think the river's actually dropped and it's been up because these leaves here, these are all soaking wet leaves, look, and squishy. So I think they've been washed down and circulated here and the water at some stage in the last couple of weeks since I've been up has been up here and is dropping back. Now this, this feed has just bumped a couple of times. That's probably as it's empty and it gets lighter. As I said when I first started, the lighter it gets with the food. Look, look, look. Here we go. Here we go. He's tugging at it. I think that's chub. I'm going to strike on the next one. Yeah, see if that was a barbell that would have gone down and held down. Got it. I've got the camera in my mouth. That will probably be a chub. I say chub. <laughs> I think you see then how I was saying about the feeder bumping backwards, tap tap bump bump, and the fish was pulling the feeder downstream with that heavy water. There we go. Nice job this time. Yeah, nice chunk. They don't look very big in the water fish, do they? Yes, at long last, on the luncheon meat. on the uh, main event. I'd like to get the chub out. Oh, he's pulling a bit of line out again. Here's the jumbo feeder. It's a better fish, slightly better fish.
there we go. Number two. What a setting. Blue sky, barble. Can't be beat, that's all bees, isn't it? I should work for a national newspaper, that. Blue sky, barble, can't be beat. Let's get it back. Well, given the weather changing tomorrow, so I better make the most of it. Now, don't go between me. Go the other way. God. The other reason this is my uh, sort of last river trip up here on the Y is because the nights are short. I'm getting little tabby bites, but by the time I drive up, you know, you get up half past five, six o'clock in Hampshire, drive all the way up here three hours. If I get a line in the water by eleven o'clock, that's good. But it's dark by six. It's you know, and I've got to get back to the car park, back to the B and B if I'm staying overnight. So it's not much fishing time really, um, and that's the other reason I don't come up here. Um, in the winter really probably if I think about it it's probably better just to come up pike fishing because it's more mobile you don't have so much gear and you can drive to different parts of the river here for me to be here at first light I'd have to leave at two o'clock in the morning in Hampshire and in the winter I'm sorry that's not happening I've done all the early door stuff it doesn't really catch any more fish it's just annoying that as the winter comes on the nights get darker earlier it just shuts down your fishing day that much it's gone very quiet very quiet it's lunch and beat again. Bites on this one too, I know. They're not tangled. There's bites on this one. Guys, right, so I'm going to switch this one off and go to the uh, head camera and get in the water with the fish. Not swimming, obviously. So I'm walking out here. I've stirred up the bottom, just out of interest. I dropped the ball of ground bait, very small. I don't know if you guys are going to see it. Just down there. And it's just tucked in beside, behind a little ledge, if you like, of, of stones. And that's what happens with your ball of ground bait. It'll roll along, but it will stop somewhere. And then it'll dissolve, and then the fish will come up and feed in that. And normally, I would have, not where I'm standing, I'll be standing on the fish. Normally, I would do this, and the last time I came, I saw hardly any minnows. Other years I've come, I've done films on it, I've put the underwater camera down. Loads and loads of minnows come up here. I mean, hordes and devour all that really really quickly but you can see there there's nothing it, well there won't be anything there anyway because i'm standing on top of it but it's just sitting there and little particles of it are breaking up and going down and if i alter that flow there see how it's disturbed it it's all gone just so i put my boot there change the flow a whoosh, it's all gone away. Here's something that can go away, this one. Psst, go on. Bloody thing swim in front of the line, look, they're so stupid. Assume the position.
This one's just hanging out there in the current. You never get an easy barbel, do you guys? You never get any. I've never in 60 years had an easy one. Uh, this one's on the pellet as well. Well, I'm pretty well out of ground bait now. I cannot believe I've got through half a bucket. And I think it's down to the fact, two things. I think I put a bit too much ground with it when I mixed it up dry with the Baileys. And it just made it a bit too soft, breaking up a bit. That's one take on it. But next to nothing. And the other thing, oh, nearly. Uh, the other thing is, I think the pace is much heavier, it's going through faster, so it's washing the feeder out much faster. Obviously the two go together, if you've got a, sour, a soft ground bait, it's going to get washed out really fast in, you know, turbulent current. And I think that's what's happened, I've got, I've maybe got one swim feeder left. Two, two sort of half feeds, so it's all over by the shouting then, so fingers crossed, get another barbel. If not, I have to go rolling meat. I might try ledgering meat. I've not done it a lot, I must admit. I've always fancied moving it, moving it through. So, look, five fish, if I can pick another one up, I'd be exceedingly happy. Chub have gone off, though. It'd be interesting to see if the swim actually does die when I stop feeding it with, with this, you know. They're not going completely loopy, they're not going crazy. But I'm ticking away quite nicely sort of one barbel every hour. So I've got a small small hook there. In fact I can even take that lunch of me down even smaller. I'm fairly sure this will bring the chub on. Obviously I've taken the uh, the bait band off. I put it across the corners, push it through, just bring it out. So that one's ready to go and then the other one is a much larger hook. Yes, this one with a great big piece of lunch meat on there. So let's see if there's any difference between the barbel and the chub for that. Go further over. That's the one that I'm pretty sure it's going to catch. I may be wrong, but I'm fancying that right hand rod getting the bite. Nearly sandwich time, I feel. The net's in the right place. The buzzers might be one pip too much. That might be bad luck. I might have to take those down a bit. I'm not standing 100 yards away. That's better. That's all we need. I would have thought that right hand one for small chub with a small piece of lunch of meat might do the trick. Talking of ground bait, 
What's the wife giving me? Pasty, that's tomorrow. It feels like a loaf of bread. No idea what's in there. Plenty, plenty of whatever. Recently been going on to soda bread, people. A bit of taste, a bit of texture. Corn beef, good old corn beef. Processed to hell, but whatever. And pickle. This looks good to me. Hmm. That'll keep you alive. Wow, it's flying past today, guys. Another couple of real small chub. The lunch of meat hasn't really uh, done it yet. And I'm just not getting lime bites or bangs. Very curious. A traditional autumnal day, but sort of strange as well, if that makes sense. It's, I don't think I've known it quite so quiet as this. Is it a portent of tough fishing to come? I just need one of these boys to fold over. We're going to stick with the meat for a little bit longer though. Another chublet on a uh, small cube of lunch and meat, guys. I might have to go for a bigger piece of lunch and meat, I think. I'm very, very close to wading. There's only a small one, but these guys look ideal on a stick float and a match rod. Absolutely just what you want. Stick float, match rod, brilliant scrappers. Like a bonefish then he went off. I'll have one more cast with a small piece. So they're not going nuts but I am actually ticking along. You're always tempted to uh, pack up and move to another swim but as the saying goes the grass is not always greener. I think I might, I might just as well plot out here because I've got to run through this ground bait in a minute and I'm going to have to go um, trundling lunch and meat. Let's try, let's try this one, I'll rotate these two. This, is, this one's bumped down a bit. I'll go out here. It's very, very clear, isn't it? It's very clear. I'm going to go right over that sort of three quarters, three quarters across the river. The reason I'm waiting when I cast is that I don't have to risk busting my rod with this huge feeder. I can, I can then reach where I intend going. This was quite a decent chub. Yeah, he's better. There we go. I find I've got hold of my waders now. Nice fish. He's worth worth catching. They're all worth catching. Jumbo piece of meat, yeah, a big piece that was. A little bit farther downstream. I suppose I'd better get in there. Not keep talking about rolling meat. I need to get in there and roll the roll. Wade the walk. Packing this in as tight as I can, so I'm definitely not going to see the whole session out with this. I put a load of crown baits, ridiculous. These feeders just eat it. Closely followed by the fish. Laying down the back. I'd like one more on the feeder, I have to say. One more barbel, that is. 
I've had these about four years, these pallets. As long as you keep the air sealed up, they're fine. Oh, here we go, 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 here we go. On camera, on camera. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> oh dear. There's anglers and there's danglers, you know the saying. And cameramen as well. It would be nice to have a whole team of cameramen doing this for you. You just concentrate. Imagine what I could catch if I just fished and I didn't have to mess around like this. So I get them over all the uh, boulders and snags and stuff. That's better, I've got the head cam on. I can, I can get in here because this one's pulling quite a bit. Filming into the sun, can't help that. I can't move the sun and I can't move the fish. Blue sky, look at that. Blue sky, bent rod. I've been looking at the gravel down here. You could stow it out with your boot like this, but normally it would be clean underneath, but as you can see there, loads and loads of sort of silt or whatever in it. Normally I've done that, and if you did another chalk stream, it would be white stones underneath. And you can also, if you went out, stimulate the fish, because they'll think it's some sort of flood coming with all the food that's been disturbed. And before you get out, say a couple of feet, you can trickle your bait down in amongst that and get them feeding. Not so much a barbel, obviously, but a roach, dace, small chub. I'll go in a bit more just so the camera works, so that I'll get the light behind the tree. He's there. Whoa, he's off, he's off. He's off, he's off, he's off. Oh no, don't, 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 don't. He's really going for it. He is really going for it. Main thing is don't wind if this is spinning at the same time. You just twist all your line up. You should wait for those lunges like this, look, to finish. He's still digging. Get it out of his system, wind down. The spool doesn't turn. It takes line if it wants to, but you're not just grinding away, spinning the line up. There's my feeder, and there's Mr. Barbel. Was. Now that might have been a small piece of meat that time. Here he comes. Oh, he's just hanging there. He's just hanging. That was another six, five, five, five pound, I'm going to call that one. That was on a small piece of meat. I know by the hook size. What a beauty. I've got about 30 minutes, 40 minutes of ground bait left. I cannot believe how much I've got through. I think it's actually paid to wade out a bit and put it sort of where I... I want to put it. There's a little tad less current over there, but it does pull round, unfortunately. I think with this one, with a larger hook, he hasn't really done the business 
isn't really done the business that one. I think I'm going to go back to a small hook and a, and a, and a pellet on. Guys, I've had an epic ba battle with a barbel. Gone right through his snag. Oh, it's still going. I've managed to get it out, but the line must be chafed. Be so careful I don't pop this one off. I kid you not, people. I just sat down, lunch of meat. I've got one throw out of the feeder left. Big cube over there. Rod just folded over. I'm running out on the battery, so I'll fight this one from a seated position and uh, I'll get back to you on the mat. What a session, number seven, nearly. Yeah, we got the fish. We got the fish. Calm down, Eddie. Just in the corner there. That hook's just gonna come straight. I don't need to tell you guys, there really is only one YouTube show to watch for all round fishing. It is the Totally Awesome Barbel, oh, sorry, the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Right, well, this is the last jumbo feeder. Come on, tank, going out. The ground bait is no more. So I should just have to rely on total skill and a piece of lunch of meat after this goes out. I'll put the other camera off because this feels like a bit of fishies. He keeps stripping me out. I don't want him stripping me out towards that boulder or snag or whatever is out there. So I'm going to get him in. I probably won't take this one to hand. I think I'm going to keep the keep the net handy for this guy. Wow, he's got some strength in him. Just walk him in slowly. I don't feel he's going to go away again. I think he's a bit bigger. He's in. Nearly. Oh yeah, he's bigger. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh boy, check this one out. Wow. Come in number six. That's fish of the day, I know. Yeah, that's more. That's what you come to the river wide for, one of these kiddies. That is going and going and going. Beautiful fish. Well pleased with that one. Look at that. He wants away. Here he goes. That's a lump. Look at that. Here he goes. Beautiful. I was virtually pulling for a break. I was waiting for it. To, it just, it just ping free. I thought I'd lost a fish. Took me way down there. And then I wound down tight and lo and behold, fish are still there. There we go. Yeah, just average size one, look. Just hooked on the edge. I can't even remember whether it's meat or pellet. Let me get him on the mat. Hey, calm down, man. He's been in that snag. I'm very lucky to get him out. Yeah, he's a beaut. Let's get him back. He'd be tired after that snag. Or not. 
I'm going to have to leave the, uh, the pellet feeder out there because I've got no more ground bait for the feeder. So once they've either washed out or had a take, then that is it. It's lunch of meat and nothing else. So, I'm going to uh, go out with the head cam, wait out there. I've got another rig made up for just ledger in here, lunch and meat, but I've got my bait apron at home, which is quite handy. So I'm going to have to use, wait for this, a big bait apron. I'm going to be using my way sling over my head so that I can keep my bait in there. So it might look a bit strange, <laughs> but then a totally awesome fishing show doesn't do it normally, do we? We've got to do something stupid. Right, let's get the uh, camera on and get out there. Because it's getting lower and lower, the sun, it's gone down behind the trees there, which is handy. I mean, I was only here, what, two weeks, three weeks ago, and it's above that tree. It's hazed over with the uh, bad weather coming in. So it's nice for me to look at the bow in the line where it enters the water, because that's my key point for seeing where the bite is, so I can strike that and touch the ledger in with a line across my fingers. So what I've got, end tackle, Really, really complicated. A big hook, probably a size four, an SSG or swan shot, and a piece of lunch of meat. That's correct. Nothing fancy, let's see if we can't. Uh... Nothing fancy, let's see if we can't pick a fish up. I'll get out as far as I can. I don't want to overcook it. It doesn't take much to knock you off your feet, to be honest. Alright, let's get up there. I don't think I need two, sh two swan shot. I think uh, one should do it. If I don't uh, get a fish in sort of 10 or 15 runs through, even a chub, then I'll go just to anchoring a piece of lunch of meat on the bottom and just sitting by the chair, which is not what I wanted to do, but hey ho, that's what we might have to do. Well, it's gone quiet. I didn't get anything out there except rocks and I got uh, pulled for a break. And that's what I thought would happen by putting two SSG on. Now, if that happens, one is too light, in other words, the meat's going through too high in the water for the barbel. And two is bumping along the bottom where I want it, but it's snagging. So what you can do is get yourself, we call it plasticine. I think other people call it Play-Doh, but the plasticine stuff's better. And you can either make a weight out of this on its own. Well, what colour should we go with? Should we go with red? And then use that. Just mould it up a bit. I'm not saying I'll catch like this, but I have caught with it, for sure. I've got this one out, just anchored out there at the moment with a piece of meat. That's all I've got left now. As soon as that feed stops going in, it appears, they go. So I do it like this, get my shot, mould the Play-Doh around that in more of a sort of long shape. So if it comes up against a stone, it can come up over the top. You know, I could, yeah, elliptical. Okay, actually, if we stay here long enough, I could make an elephant out of it, or maybe a lion or a tree. <laughs> Fishing's that slow. 
I can make a, make a barrow because I've got to get that back to the car yet and it's got a burst tyre. That's going to be lovely pushing that through the mud. But thank goodness Woody's told me just go around the outside of the uh, wooded area. Saves going all through the jungle with my barrow. On, off, unload it, unload it. That was definitely a good bit of advice for him. Right, I'm going to wheel this one in. There's no point leaving it out there because I'm going to be standing pretty well where it is. I have one more go with the uh, plasticine round the wait and see if I lose another set we might have to call it quits. I think I'm going to take my polarising glasses off guys because I, can't, I need a hat on and I need to see where that line's entering the water so the only way to do it is fish properly now and uh, I'll come back and get the camera if I do get a hook up. It's weird, one small chump you know, one small chump. All I've just thrown out the ledger lunch and meat while I've had that. Been good, seven barbell. I mean, I would have been happy with three in the day, so I've done really good. But I find it just dies off in late afternoon, evening there. I may be wrong. I might be able to stay on a little bit longer tonight, because um, that's an easier walk round for me back with a trolley rather than be there. But I might just move down uh, one swim, just throw it out and sit there uh, and see what's there. But it seems really dead here now. As soon as I stop that swim feeder going in, no barbel. Look, one could grab this lunch of meat, but I doubt it somehow. It's just got that sort of dead feel, so I'm going to see if I can get packed up. If I don't talk to you again, guys, thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I've really enjoyed this. Get out there, do some autumn barbel fishing before it gets too cold. And we'll see you in the next film. See you, guys. It's such a good day. I knew I had a, a split tyre when I got it up here. I don't know how I'm going to get it back. I've got over half a mile to get this. Look, look. I've got to drag it with all that stuff on it. And wait till you see the. This is the new totally awesome tyre. I mean, what's, what's happened to it? I suppose I've got to boil, have I got to burst it? It's not going anywhere, is it? Do I let the tire, well, maybe if I let it down. Somebody out there got any, any tips with Smith when you need him with a bicycle pump? <laughs> That's like a carbuncle. God, you need an NHS operation to get rid of that one. I want to keep the tube. How can I? I've got to get something in there, guys. Bear with me. I wonder if my scissors will go into the valve. Just drop it. It's going down. It's working. It's just got to go down enough. Maybe I blew it up too much previously. Let's see if that moves. Just a tad more. Just a tad more. Oh, I'm going to stop somewhere else. I won't bother now. I'll give it a haircut that while I'm at it. Yes, sir, what would you like? Uh, would you like the crew cut, the army special, or what would you like? Oh yes, I know, it's terrible, this cost of living, yeah. Yeah, now you can give me a tip for this. Because I've got a sense of humour, people, honestly. I couldn't get up this hill yet. Oh dear. Imagine this if I hadn't caught any barbel. It's bad enough when you've caught a load of barbel. Well, that's a pretty useful fishing trip, that one. I enjoyed that. But then I always enjoy going up there. Just a shame I only go like once a year or something. Anyway, on the way back from a family trip, yes, I happen to be near a fishery I've made a film on before. No fishy rods, but I had to pop in and give you guys a bit of an update. Well, this one's a bit different, guys. I've been uh, bringing the wife up to Kennel from Warwickshire, and I'm outside what's called the Saxon Mill. Very old mill. We actually did a film here. It's up on the site. I'll see if Mike can maybe put a film link to it. And I thought we're going to pop up and just have a look. We're virtually coming within 
three or four miles of it like a big restaurant place old building very old building it's a god awful day it is a shocker is there no people here and they got a nice meal here now the fishing here has been apparently well improved quite a bit from when i fished here before i've had some really big fish and uh alex who runs it is going to be uh give me some information and there's the old mill i don't know whether you guys are going to see this that is a running mill there absolutely you won't see in the dark and i haven't got the camera floodlight but a massive wheel so if i get down guys you can see the actually massive size of this stone wheel for grinding the flour one assumes there which would have been tied to uh the center spigot piece if you like through there and i guess the grinding room was either in that side or this side massive piece of engineering so you can see they got like a big restaurant area outside but apparently this mill pool has some monster perch inside of it there's some culverts i don't know whether it's that one up there when we were driving up he was telling me on the phone about oh, i can see fish down there anyway i don't know whether there's small roach or what and when i fished up here before there were loads of roach upstream but um, apparently there's some really big perch in here. I mean, talking three pounds, that looks very perchy back there. I guess it's this culvert here with the weed down there. It's a lot deeper than it looks. And obviously there's plenty of water with the rain coming through this mill pool. But you can see where there'd be some big fish in there. I'm waiting for this, some monster pike over in the weir area, apparently. You see there would be lilies down there another area there you can't fish obviously off here i'm just showing you a rough idea of what it looks like now last time that was a trickle coming over there. it's actually roaring down here now big big weir pool plenty of water coming down i'm looking for fish all the time I don't think there's any fisherman is there that can actually walk over a bridge without staring over the edge and seeing what's down there. Uh, when I filmed apparently it was up there and I had to push through the swims. Wow look at the size of this bracket fungus there. Am I correct guys? That looks like solid as you want bracket fungus that is as big as i've seen that one and more around there now there's a bit of a footpath around there and i guess this is an overspill here but they were telling me that they've um, oh cleared some of the swim so i've left the wife for a minute and i'll go in exploring jungle exploring oh I roach fished up there and saw quite a lot of roach up there. Um, I think Alex was saying he had trout up there recently. Lovely streamer we there. Another walkway over here. And sort of small backwater pool there. I wonder what's in there. My goodness me, that looks dark and ominous. Well, there's fish there because there's, there's light patches of leaves and stuff on the bottom. I've seen small fish going across the top of the leaves could be anything in there i think the film are called jungle fishing and you can see why plenty of himalayan balsam there and i can assure you the nettles go to six feet they did when i was here before i've left the good lady wife up by the weir she's probably going in to pour herself a pint in this accent mill it's a place called guy's cliff which you might be able to see over there and the last time I did an overnighter was here um, in a bivy overnight um, I had a fish here with the other lads they fished further up here, I'll just show it to you I'm going to show you a couple of swims, that's all they've done a lot of clearing here by the look of it so I don't believe this was a swim but there's the weir way back up there and there's a restaurant I don't believe there's a big swim here before so there's a nice flow down through there and meets some of the more of the main river coming out over this way you know so it's, it looks quite fishy there it's terrible when you've got to come up 
on a family trip and uh, I'm not allowed to bring a fishing rod but it's almost as good to be honest just coming down briefly to see the river I'm also rushing because it's horrendous weather today now through here is a pathway cut to another swim it all looks so fishy down all the way through there lovely lovely clear water I think it's a main pool through there oh I remember this area Lily, Lily Corner I think I've never personally met the woman but she's probably very pleasant and they get some really big fish from here that is an absolute classic coming round sweeping bend all the way around and a carp I think uh, Alex was saying carp there big sort of into double figure river carp and I remember seeing them down under this tree um, I couldn't catch them personally I did remember seeing them Whoa. an ominous deep dark pool that has got fish written all over it these boots are a little bit sketchy I don't want to go in there I'm bivvying up down opposite what they call the sort of main brickwork wall which I fancied hmm, was it here? obviously not Graham beware of the stingers I mean that looks perch and pike doesn't it let's push on through oh, my trousers are going to be soaked the wife's going to go mad I'm not supposed to be going in the mud I've got the family relative visiting clothes on look how clean and tidy I am that's not like GP is it I remember fishing here before and I'd fancied across there for barbel got a feeling I had a small pike from here well there you go guys to give you an idea and look there is the big what was I guess a castle guys cliff it's called if you want to look it up historic place somebody's fished down here I see a bit of fishing line there I guess the guys will get that out and way way downstream oh, at the time it was a nightmare to get through if you pull the film up you'll see it I've got a really big perch on a lure it was a beauty but now they're telling me there's even bigger perch in there how far down you can get now I don't know so there you go guys a little brief interjection of information fishy for those out there who like fishing it might just be somewhere worth having a look at you can get in touch with uh, the Saxon Mill Fishery and see what the score is um, with memberships or whatever you want like that um, somewhere different it's somewhere different it'd be somewhere different if I put my ankle out here she's like going down beach fishing at Lillstock Beach it's down in Somerset where the Zoida apples are. One last look at this lovely looking weir. Well there you go, it's a lovely looking bit of water. I don't know the full spec on it, you know you'll have to get in touch with the Saxon Mill Fishery itself, find out what it's about but some big old fish in there, they got 30 something pound pike, 3 pound perch a lot of fish being caught there that I didn't even know were in there especially, especially a 30 pound pike and by the way, don't forget if you're watching this film and you've, you've soldiered on through the face of adversity and sat down quietly and relaxed, ready for the weekend and had a good old watch of this programme there's another one you can skip over to Wayne Common Anglin because I think it's just put up, probably after this film's finished, on the same day, fingers crossed it all went up Wayne, uh, is part three of his boatyard walk with boat tips. So anybody interested in boat fishing, sea fishing, that type of thing, go and check out Wayne Common Angling on YouTube and there might be a little half an hour, 20 minutes, whatever, that you can pass there as well. People will see you in the next one, hopefully I can get another two up next week. See you again.